Now that you've mastered the basics, it's time for volume two of the ins and outs of video blogging. For years, traditional media, sorry, old media, no, dirty media has tried to sell us things that looked good and were interesting. Luckily, with the dawning of video blogging, there's a cheap and fast alternative to making media that looks cheap and fast. While dirty media is stuck telling stories, video blogging is about connecting with people. And what better way to connect with people than by staring and talking straight at them? Don't blink, that's one less connection you could have made. First, some quick tech notes. Think of your camera as your friend. A friend that doesn't talk much and stands unnaturally close to you and doesn't always come through when you need him, but a friend. When you're filming, be natural. After all, there's nothing more natural than talking to a machine. I said delete, mother Next, there's lighting. Remember, God created mood lighting. There's dark mood and light mood. Choose accordingly. Next, there's editing. Editing controls the tempo of your show. Think of it as your band leader. The most important thing to remember about editing is to cut exactly at the point. Probably the most important decision that you'll make is choosing your background. Remember, your background is your brand. It's what people will look at when they're tired of looking at you. For example, my background is a wall. That's the thing that I do. That's my thing. You can't do that thing. When you choose your background, try something simple and recognizable, like a dictionary or an almanac. Remember, faces may come and go, but it's your background that's going to bring in the dough. Although worrying too much about content is what's held back dirty media for years, a good place to start if you're stuck is to talk about video blogging itself. Kind of like how when you're on a date, it's really great to talk about how the date's going with your date. Do you like me? Great. Now all you have to do is to become popular. The great thing about the web is that there's no universal mechanism to track and verify statistics. Even if there was, you can take advantage of the fact that even the Nielsens don't really understand the difference between viewers, page views, hits, downloads, and subscriptions. If you want to be popular, just go ahead and say you are. I call it rocket booming. No affiliation to the website. 14 inches? Really? No, I was just rocket booming. Make sure to include your video blog in every kind of subscription service that exists. The great thing about syndication is, if they subscribe, you know they're watching. People might question you by pointing to publicly available statistics services like Alexa, but everyone knows they don't mean anything. For example, my show, In Blue, has about 30,000 viewers a day. Shown in red, rocketboom.com, no affiliation to the phrase, has said that since March they have a daily viewing audience of more than 300,000 viewers. According to one blog post, that doesn't even include subscribers. An additional 50,000 come from off-site distribution channels. They even have a cool little graph. I use a similar statistics program, but mine comes with little numbers. At the recent Future of PR conference, they said that the numbers are still growing. That alone should be enough to convince you that Alexa is just a bunch of scribbles. So if you want to be popular, stick to your own background statistics, or BS, and people will start paying attention. And remember, make sure autoplay is on.